Hey everybody, it's Mr. John Lang, Mr. Washlife himself. How we doing? I want to make a video today and just kind of speak with you on business. I know that's very general, but there's just a few things we should talk about, okay? So, let's get into this. Um, I get asked a lot how to how to get jobs and how do I how do I get the ball rolling from nothing and all I can do is share you my story and this is what worked for me okay I actually started off as a window cleaning company and I went around and I did route work I, I got I went out and I got little storefront commercial accounts and um, I would see the business owner all the time because I'm there every couple weeks or every week or month or whatever they had set up and um, I would just ask them for reviews when I would, you know, I would tear them off their little receipt on the carbon copy receipt book thing. Um, take my money and be like, hey, you know, would you mind leaving me a review? I'm really trying to get the ball rolling on this thing. It's a brand new company. If you're happy, can you help me out and leave a review? And uh, nine times out of ten, they would, they would leave me a review. A lot of the times I would have to physically show them. I would be like, I'd be like, hey, you know, you get your phone on you real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Can I show you something? Like, if you just go to here, like, if you go to uh, Google, if you just type in my business, um, I'm right here on Google. I'm really trying to get some reviews so people know who I am and they know that I'm a, a good company and I do a good job. Would you mind just, like, leaving a quick review? It takes, like, two seconds. They'll leave a review. I probably would have got more if I did that more often, but I didn't because I didn't know what I was doing. But thankfully, you have me here to tell you how to do this if you choose to go this route, okay? So... Anyway, long story short, um, I I did this over the winter. I started it in Feb. Jan I started in like January or maybe even end of December, but I actually got my business registered in February. And uh, you know, so come spring, I had I had quite a few little reviews, and the business owners wanted their houses, their house windows cleaned, and so on and so forth. And then before you know it, I got into soft washing. And now coincidentally, I like the soft washing more than the window cleaning. Um, but now that I'm here, now that, so now that I'm at the point where I have a reputation and I have clients and I have work coming in, now it's time to make sure everything, all my ducks are in order. And really you should have this stuff from the get go but it's not super critical because you don't have a ton of jobs. You know, you don't, you don't want to get too in over your head, I guess. You know, go out and try some things out and make sure this is for you. Make sure this is what you want to get into. Um, here's one of my most favorite, most recent pieces of um, material. Service point checklist. Um, notes. And the house. Okay. Okay. You'll see the home advisor thing up there. Quint, you know, personally, I don't really care for home advisor. I'm not set up for it yet. I have a video actually on the whole home advisor thing if you want to check it out. But uh, I, this is the number one thing. This is why I wanted home advisor. Because if you see my hand, I got these nasty, creepy prison looking tattoos. And uh, I'm a big guy and I look like I might rob you. No, I'm just kidding. I don't think I look like that, but I can be intimidating. So I wanted that screened and cleared so that, um, you know, it, we have it. We passed home advisors background check. That's important for a lot of people. Um, so that's one of them. Let me show you something else. So another thing we got is um, the yard signs. These are super important, okay? For, let me tell you what the service point checklist is for. This is um, after they do, after they get service done with you, or even you can use it for like a, I use it for after they get a service done and sometimes even when I'm doing an estimate um, because I, I use the customer factor, so I like to email on my estimates. Um, but I do, I'll be like, what I'll say is, okay, so I went ahead and took a look around. Um, I got your service point checklist here. 
it's very you know generic but I, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and send you an email with a lot more description to the service and to the job and uh, what we have to offer you um, along with a copy of our insurance and stuff like that there's just so much to it I it's just way easier to uh, email it so but here's your service point checklist here's some areas of concern that um, I noticed also I know you only asked about the house wash but I went ahead and gave you some pricing for other areas that you could possibly benefit from and uh, you know on the back there's some notes for some other things I noticed that and uh, yeah so just hold on to that you have it you know if you don't want to get any of these services done just yet at least you have it and uh, you have an idea of what it's going to cost in the future okay so that's that and like I said I'll email it I'll email the actual estimate to you I use that for this sometimes why not um, so that's the service point checklist and that's what that's used for and that's how that goes now after you do a job leave a yard sign so you kinda wanna you know save for gutter cleaning you got the gutter cleaning one it might be a good idea to start popping these out you know before October um, so you get the gutter cleaning and these are big signs Can you see my big ass head um, these, are the, these are the bigger signs. Good material. You got house washing, and this is how. Regardless of if you if you use us to get your marketing material, this is how you want the design to look. You want it very simple. I see some guys make the mistake where they try to pack it all on one sign. Uh, you know, house washing, gutter cleaning, and more. Call for services. Here's our number. Blah blah blah. Your people are driving by when they look at these signs. That's all. All they want to see is what what it is you do and a good way to contact you. So that's what it is. What we do, a good way to contact us. And uh, you know, if you don't have a website for whatever reason, just we'll make the phone number bigger or something. Um, you know, and then if you notice how small my logo is, that's the least relevant part. See, the roof cleaning is actual, actually a roof. I mean, guys, there's no one doing the signs like us. <laughs> I mean, come on. Oh, and also, you something should know, it comes with uh, grates. These are, I've seen some really small ones for some people. These are nice and tall. Or they stick the sign up nice and high and it comes with that so that's included in the price I mean I've been meaning to tell Devin to make sure people know that that's included so I don't think people even know that's included most other sites you got to pay for those separate okay and then another piece of material that I use is the postcards okay again shows what we do simple it's clean um, contact us for a free estimate um, remove algae mold mildew rust and other containments from your home and I've seen Devin tweak these things to really really look cool um, if you want some other ideas on how the front looks ask him and he'll provide you with some examples but that we had a guy that did it aircraft cleaning and semi truck cleaning and car cleaning and and it was a really cool looking card I gotta give it to them um, but it's not common people do all that type of cleaning um, I mean I guess it's just as common as who knows but so you got this and then you got the back hang on I got so you got the back here And you could again you could fill out an estimate this way okay sorry I had to pause that for a second but um, as I was saying on the back you can uh, fill you know fill out the description price and blah, blah, blah. I use these for estimates also sometimes but what I really use these for is our five arounds 
or so what we call it. So anytime we do a job or if we're ever putting up door hangers or postcards throughout the neighborhood, you just roll it up like this and you can put it in the, usually like a storm door has like a handle that's like a, um, you know, like a half circle, I guess. You can just put it in there. Um, you can open their storm door and close it in there. Um, and this is what I use. Where I live, it is always windy. So I found that the, the uh, door hangers, the actual door hangers, when you hang them on stuff, they just blow away most of the time. Like we have a lot of windy days, so I didn't want to rely on the door hangers. There's nothing wrong with door hangers, um, but I just find myself using these. So those are the main three things I use, and that really, really keeps us busy, uh, keeps our phone ringing. Um, I, with the customer factor, I enter in the data. So I ask them how they heard about us. And a lot of the times, one of our biggest marketing things is yard sign and a flyer. They got a flyer on their door from walking around. And I mean, this is quality stuff. We look like we're a very well put together company and, um, that's that they you know that's that's why we get such a good return off of this if you just if i just went and handed them a piece of paper saying wallies we do this that and the other give us a call today and it looks like i printed it from my computer in my mom's basement I'm not going to get a good return off of that i just really really like these the, these are cool because it says call or text today for a free quote free estimate it's blank here or if you got the time you could even jot down, like hand right in there, what you do. Um, another really cool idea I've heard for these is you kind of make a big stack. You know, maybe get some like high school kids for our, to come in off the weekend. I heard this from another guy named Joshua Latimer. Um, get like some big stacks made of them. And he, he, he ran a real big business before he sold it. Uh, so he knows what he's talking about but they kind of have pricing set up for small, medium, large, okay, for window cleaning. So like a small home would be a hundred, you know, 99 bucks. A medium would be 179 and a large would be 289 or something. And they'd have three stacks on a table and they'd hand write uh, window cleaning and then the price, 99, and they'd set it in that stack. So when they go so send these guys out to do door hangers, they would just put on all the small houses, they'd put that flyer there. For all the medium houses, they'd give them that, the medium flyer, and all the large houses, give them the large flyer. And then when they'd call the, the business, when they would um, call the company, say, hey, I just got an estimate for window cleaning. Is that is that real? Is, and then you say, okay, so yeah, that those is that a real price or whatever? Um, you, you answer the phone and you, you know, you say, Hey, yeah. Um, yeah, those, those are real prices. Um, we do have, uh, there, you know, those, those, those are real prices, but you know, just to, you know, but those, those prices were just given real briefly from the street. Um, you know, just to finish the process, we would like to come out there, take any notes of any other things that we might come across. Um, you know, take a look at things in the back, the back of your house and uh, just kind of go from there. You know, that's a really, really, really rough draft script on the phone, but I'm just kind of trying to explain the potential and different ideas you can use for these. Um, but that's, so this, this, you know, I've kind of gone in depth enough about how I keep clients and how I keep my phone ringing. Um, Maybe let's speak about what to do when you actually go on an estimate. <clears throat> Me personally, when I pull up to a job, I um, never park in the driveway. I always park in the street. I read somewhere that you get you land more jobs and stuff if you park in the street rather than the driveway. It's little things like that. It's first impressions that mean a lot. And uh, sometimes it's taken as a sign of disrespect, believe it or not, when you park in someone's driveway. Um, and I kind of got to thinking about it and I was like, man, you know what, whenever I had like a service company come to my house, like a plumber or whatever, I would get really annoyed when they'd park in the driveway. Cause I'm like, man, now I got to park in the street. Now I got to walk up to my own house or 
man, I got to get out of here and I got to wait for him to move his car because he couldn't just park in the street. And, you know, that's kind of where your head goes. And uh, it's funny. You don't think about it until, until, I don't know, it's brought to your attention. So anyway, I park in the street. Um, I make sure that I have my client's information correct. I double check, make sure I got her name and uh, the service she asked about. And I keep it on like a yellow notepad. Always have a yellow notepad. Um, every successful person in the world will tell you yet they have yellow notepads. So I, you know, I, I take their name, the service they're asked about. I go knock on the door, take a step back, pretend I'm doing something, flip through my notepad, whatever. When they answer the door, hey, Susan. Hey, it's uh, John Lang. Uh, hey, I'm uh, John with Wally Services. I'm just here to, you know, I, I know you asked about a house washing quote. I was just going to take a quick look. Um, take a quick look around back. Is that all right? Yeah, sure, sure. All right, I'll be right back. Give me like two minutes. I just got to take a look around. Uh, is there any locked gates? Any any dogs I should be aware of? No, no, you're good. All right, cool. Go take your walk around. Take your notes. Um, a few factors that I'll take into consideration is for what? Well, I, I I try to I try to guess in my head. All right, how long do I think this job will take? And um, I jot that down, and then I take in the factor of the difficulty. So, do they have a lot of landscaping? Are the houses really, really close together? Um, is there really high peaks? Is there weird grooves of the house? Um, stuff like that. Uh, just a side note. Um, I got a lot. Of, I, I there was a period of time where I got a lot of requests to do townhomes in this neighborhood, and they were it was duplexes. Part uh, it was duplexes, and um, you know just small one story duplexes. And in their head, they're like, they're like, why? You know, I, I, it should be pretty cheap. It's just it's three quarters of a house. You don't even have to clean the one wall because we're connected. And you know, if I just want the half of my house done, it should be really quick. Well, I and I and I agreed. But after experience in doing these, I realized. These houses take pretty much the same amount of time as just a normal one-story house. And the reason why is because you have to kind of pre-rinse stuff and keep other things wet and, you know, make sure you wet the neighbor's house and there's everything so close together and you have to be careful not to drag hoses over things and ruin bushes or yank out those little lights that stick out of the ground that people put in the ground that I can't stand. Uh, those little solar lights, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but... Yeah, so if you, you know, I, I pay attention to that. Are the houses really close together? Is this, is this going to be like a crazy maze that I have to pull my hose through and am I going to get really frustrated? Um, or is it just wide open and hardly any landscaping and no fences and stuff? Um, I also take into consideration the size of the house, um, you know, and I try to, you know, if I, if I can, I ask them and if they know, then that's helpful. Um, I guess you can also look it up online. I rarely do, but you can. But a lot of times I just guess. I'm pretty good at guessing. You know, is it 2,500 square feet, 3,500, 45, whatever. Um, and then I also factor in material. And material, it kind of goes with the level of infestation, the dirtiness. How dirty is it? Um, so that's four factors. I factor in time difficulty, size, and material. Um, so I kind of factor in, it's going to take two hours off first glance, first impression, and then I keep walking around. Ooh, actually, it is kind of difficult back here. There's a weird deck and a walkout porch and a, the overhang and blah, blah, blah. You know, maybe that'll take a little extra time. And then I, you know wow, you know what, this house is pretty big or, you know, it's pretty small. And then, you know, maybe I get around to the north side and it's just pff, caked on. There's literally algae mold spores and it's going to take, you know, some a little bit of agitation to get those really thick pieces off. And so I factor all those things in and I kind of, you know, figure it out. And I'm like, okay, so it's going to take a little extra time to, clean off that heavy stuff it might take an extra hour um the difficulty over there that's, that's probably going to take another 45 minutes to hit that little special wall um 
you know what I'm trying you know what I'm trying to say so I factor in those little things and then I add it to my initial idea so you know maybe off first glance it's a typical it looks like a typical you know off of the size of the house and first impressions it looks like a typical two hour job and then after adding in the level of infestation and the difficult weird nook that I'm gonna have to get a ladder for um, it's actually gonna take close to four hours so my estimates almost doubled so those are that's that's kind of how I do estimates um, and that's and you know one of these days I'll get like a real mathematical form filled out but even even that I think you're just gonna have to kind of have experience on how to how to do an estimate I think there's certain things you just can't plan for or predict not you know you know what I'm trying to say like you kind of just have to look at things sometimes and be like wow that is kind of weird and you know what I'm trying to say is if it's hard to get a number for square footage if there's a weird nook because you can't you know it's like regardless of the square it might be a 1200 square foot home but it's got some crazy awkward thing um anyway that's how you do the estimate those are some factors you should look at and uh also in the meantime if you do other services such as concrete cleaning or fences or decks or windows fact you know write up your estimate for all that present it to them um but before you present it to them maybe take a picture or take a picture of your estimate or whatever if you're using like the customer factor or something so then you can actually enter that stuff in um, a lot of the times I'll use my mobile app of the customer factor and I'll just enter it all in while I'm doing it and then I'll write it down but that's just how I do things um, when you present it to them you know they only ask for the house wash so you kind of want to say if you're gonna give them multiple services you want to be like all right, so I got your estimate ready. Um, me personally, I say, I'm gonna also email a copy of it over to you. It'll be in the form of more so like a proposal. And uh, you know, there'll be some information about us, some testimonials, um, a copy of our insurance, you know, some of the, some of the more important stuff, just so you have an idea of who you're working with. Uh, a little, and there's a little more detail to it in the email. But for now, here's an idea. I have your estimate ready. Um, I noticed some areas of concern. Um, you know, you know your your siding definitely does need to be washed. But I noticed your windows are pretty dirty, also, and they're they're honestly they're gonna probably get a little worse after the after the house wash. Um, you know, maybe we should go ahead and take care of those. But again, it's up to you. Uh, your gutters were pretty packed. So anyway, I wrote a quote for all the services. Uh, keep in mind, we offer a multi-service discount. So if you get two or more services, you're going to get 10% off your total. And uh, yeah, you know, either way, regardless of what route you take, at least you have an idea of what it would cost to get that stuff done. Okay, cool. Great. Thanks a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. So, uh, you know, did you want to, you want to go ahead and get scheduled for the house wash or do you want to? You want to maybe get some other stuff done too. Oh no, I think the house wash right now will be fine. You know, just the way you word it. You, see, you hear how I said, you know, so you want to go ahead and get that house wash scheduled, or did or did you want to get more done? So the, their options are either get the house wash or get more. It's not not schedule. You know, so and that's just sales 101. So um, so now you get it, you get it booked. Like, okay, great. So uh, I got uh, next week, Thursday afternoon. Does that work for you? Cool. Or if it doesn't, you know, what days work better for you? And uh, boom, boom, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. On to the next show. That's that. You got your job scheduled. Oh, here's a, another thing. You know, I, you notice how I said afternoon. Um, I used to try really hard in the beginning of the year and beginning of my business when I would schedule people to give them really precise times on when we would be there. And it's hard to do. Uh, you never know when things are going to pop up. And it's very annoying when you told a customer you would be there at 1 p.m. and now you have to reschedule for 3 p.m. 
and it's like, oh, I wish I just didn't have to call them. I wish we could just get going because now you're taking out your phone and you're calling and you're stopping and you're wasting more time. So a way to avoid that is when I schedule a job, I, you know, maybe I got two small jobs. I, they're both scheduled for between eight and 12, eight, 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. Yeah, 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. They're scheduled for the morning. And then maybe I got another bigger job or something, or, you know, then that job scheduled from 12 to 5 p.m. So between that window is when we'll get to you. And it just makes your life so much easier. So I think that's all I, I mean, I could rant and rant and rant, you know me, but um, this video is getting pretty lengthy. So again, that's, you know, this is how, this is why the, this is why we started the page because this, my business would not be where it's at without stuff like this, without these door hangers. Um, you know, go ahead and check out the site. All that price, that pricing includes um, your personalized design. I mean, this is the rough, this is generally what it's going to look like, but you know, of course, all your stuff's going to be on it. So your logo, your phone number, your website, um, and if your services differ from mine, that'll get changed too. Um, and I think he, I think he's cool with changing the colors too. Yeah. If, if you can change the colors to match your logo, um, but get that stuff checked out. These are super cheap. Go, go hand them out in some neighborhoods, get, drum up some business and do what you got to do, but never, never sit there on your pity pot complaining that you don't have work and you need more customers if you haven't gotten marketing material and you haven't gone out and handed it out because there's no ex there's that's the only reason you don't have work is because of you if you you gotta you know don't look at it as oh man these are I'm, I can't remember how much a thousand of these are let's look nah who cares Let's say, for example, a hundred bucks. I think they're more than that, though. But um, I'm pretty sure they're more than that. So, oh man, a hundred bucks for 500 cards. You got to look at it as, wow, I only got to spend a hundred bucks, and I can make a, at least a thousand. Okay, so invest your money. It's always investing. When you're mark, when you spend your money on marketing material like this, it's an investment in order to make way more money. Thanks for watching guys. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. Hit that like, hit that notification bell, and raise hell.